Go watch part 1. Link will be in the description. Coming in at number six, we got Wonka with uh, Timothy Chalamet as Wonka. Uh, when I first heard about it, I was thinking, what? A Wonka origin story? First, I thought this was going to be meh, but um, when I watched it, I actually thought it was really good. Um, um, I had a I had a very pleasant time watching um watching uh a Wonka honestly Paul King the director of this movie and um the Paddington films he does a really excellent job uh building this uh, world of Wonka and um the chocolate cartel and and uh where you make you where this film makes you um root for uh, Wonka so that he can you know become the man that he is the the crazy um chocolate Oompa Loompa Man, that's him, that's Wonka. So, yeah, I, I, um, I enjoyed um, the film. Um, the cinematography was very excellent in um, the movie. And um, the CGI was kind of off um, on, um, on um, Hugh Grant. Hugh, Hugh Grant? Hugh, Hugh Grant, yeah, Hugh, yeah, Hugh Grant um, as um, the um, Oompa Loompa. Um, but I thought he, but, but I thought he, he did a, a decent, uh, performance. Um, but yeah, um, I didn't, I didn't expect, uh, much of, uh, Wonka before, uh, diving in. But, uh, yeah, I think this was, um, a pleasant surprise. Um, so yeah, especially because, um, this is directed by a Paul King. Um, the, the same man who did those amazing Paddington films. Like, he takes, um the spins, like the, like the charming, childlike sense of Paddington, and puts it into Wonka. Um, there is only one um, nitpick which I have with uh, Wonka. So, in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, uh, di directed by uh, Tim Burton, um, it did dive into specific, uh, details, like, um, how he has, uh, this, this, um, this social thing where, um, he, he's kind of socially awkward. Um, I feel like they didn't really dive into the, dive into that part too much, but I'm guessing, um, maybe this was gonna be just like a, um, just a harmless, child-friendly, um, movie that, that, that both kids and adults can um, enjoy. And also, I really liked some of the um, new characters which they introduced in uh, Wonka, like uh, Noodle, for example. Um, I thought she was like a very um, charming character in um, the film. And and I really liked how they gave her like a um, arc in the story where um, at first she didn't know what her um, full, full, full name was. And um, spoiler alert, but um, the way how how they in introduce uh, uh, things like a uh, parent ne neglectment and um, and just saying stuff like "Oh, your mother was dead" and stuff like that's cold. That's the most coldest thing to put in a uh, kids movie. Um, but yeah, I mean, I wouldn't really say that it's a it's a kids movie. It's a kids movie. Like, sure, it's a PG rating, but honestly. I I think this should have been a, a rated U. Honestly, I think I think the BBFC, like whoever is running the BBFC, I think they need to fix up their ratings. Especially you, Five Nights at Freddy's. Especially you. Um. So yeah, that's um, that, that, that's Wonka, and. Yeah, I'm gonna give Wonka a solid, um, this is hard, probably a 
8.9 out of 10. I, I absolutely had a lot of fun watching Wonka. Um, so, yeah, um, it's it's still out in um, cinemas. So um, if you guys have the time, then uh, yeah, go see Wonka. Um, so yeah, kept surprised how how this is a short one compared to uh, compared to my disappointing list because the last one um, was thirty eight minutes long. I am sorry if I had to keep you guys. Um, watching but yeah keep watching this one keep watching this one though especially because there's two more parts so yeah on to the next movie coming in at number five we got equalizer three bro 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 this one was brutal <laughs> honestly um the film was cold. It was it was as cold as ice. Um, but yeah, um, Equalizer. I I never seen like the OG Equalizer series, um, but I remember um, seeing trailers and posters um, for Equalizer three. And hell, I, I was even looking at like the the posters for um, equal, Equalizer 1 and Equalizer 2. And then I was thinking, this looks like a John Wick ripoff. This, just, this just looks like a cheap John Wick ripoff with Denzel Washington. But then I decided to binge watch uh, the Equalizer films. I've only managed to see number one. I was halfway through number two, but I didn't really got to fully finish it. But when I watched Equalizer 3 in the cinema... All that build up from the first movie and bits of the second movie, I was stoked, I was hyped, and I was like, man, the character of um Robert, forgot his last name, but he was awesome. Like, j just picture in your head, John Wick, but if he had like the power of math and he had like a stopwatch, and then he was like, I so. <laughs> In 10 seconds, you about to die, mother <laughs> So, yeah, um, when I watched uh, number three in the cinema, um, I am honestly surprised how this got away with a 15 rating. What the, what the, what the hell, BBFC, for the third time in a row? Oh, man, like, the movie is Brutal. I, I'm talking brutal to the brim because, like, there's, there's a. I'm not even gonna go into injury details in this movie, but um, the sh which which happens in this film is honestly crazy. Um, oh no! At times, I even had to look away. I was like, ah, nope, nope, nope. Um, but yeah, uh, Denzel Washington stole the show, um, in Equalizer 3, as, as usual with the first movie, and of course a bit of, um, um, the second film, and, um, I liked how it dealt with, with, um, with, um, the Mafia, and hell, speaking of, in this movie, um, one of the quotes in this became, well, it's not iconic, but, it always refreshes my brain. Like, Mafia is like cancer. There's no cure. Honestly, that part was was sunk. It sunk into my brain um, after I watched Equalizer 3. And, um, yeah, I mean, with these movies, like, the, the, the cinematography is absolutely beautiful. Like, like how we see landscape shots of um Sicily Cic Cicilli? Cicilli? yeah the, the town in, in Italy and honestly it felt like if I, if I was going on a road trip it, <laughs> oh, and another thing in um this movie like the stuff which um the mafia does in this film it, 
at times it was absolutely um disturbing and and um and uh, and uh, when you see um 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 robert go go after the the mafia you're like yeah here we go equalize about to beat your asses <laughs> and um yeah um <laughs> i don't know what else um to say um honestly um antoine fuqua is a is a um I really want to say like the like he's basically the Christopher Nolan of um action movies like the way um 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 he films it and all this quick a uh, shot takes and stuff um so yeah um let me think of a nitpick which I had about Equalizer three um at times the movie did fell a bit slow. And um, like j j just like how, how I mentioned with the with the brutalness of this movie and the uh, gore in the film, at times it did feel very extreme. At times, I did have to uh, I did have to uh, look away um, a bunch of times when I was watching um, Equalizer three, and oh god. Again, I uh, I'm not even gonna dive into um, the stuff which happens in this movie, um, but if you wanna go see it, then you can watch it. But the, but but all which I'm gonna say is that the, the, there are scenes of of stuff ha happening to the eye and the foot and and um, just overall just pain. That's all which I'm gonna uh, say. O overall, just j j just pain. Just pain, 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 pain. Um, but yeah, but I'm surprised how I haven't gave this movie a rewatch because you know what? That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna rewatch Equalizer three. So yeah, final score of the movie. Equalizer three gets. I think this might be like another eight out of ten. I I absolutely had fun watching Equalizer three. Um, Denzel Washington absolutely stole, um, um, the show. Um, everybody had, had, um, great, um, a great performance in this movie. And I hope Antoine Fuqua makes, uh, more action movies like these. Uh, so, yeah. It is sucks that we're never gonna see another Equalizer movie. But I am glad that I got a taste of, um, Equalizer. So, yeah, it did kind of suck that I doubt this, th this franchise before diving in, but I'm glad I, I watched it. So, yeah, on to number four. Coming in at number four, we got Scrapper. Now, you are maybe thinking, what is Scrapper? Um, this isn't really like a um, mainstream or high budget uh, movie. Uh, this is mostly a, a British film, which um, which uh, came out during August. Um, I remember I like this movie wasn't in my radar. I I did not know anything about it. All I knew was that it was either gonna show up in a secret screening, uh, which I went to in um, Cine World. And at first, I thought they were, they were gonna put on a Strays because um, it was a rated fifteen. But this is a twelve. Um, but yeah, when when the film played, and when Scrapper played um, at the secret screening, I was like, oh god, I bet this is gonna be garbage. Um, but then I watched it. A few minutes in, I was actually <laughs> invested. Um, at times, uh, the movie got me laughing, and yeah. Uh, I haven't told y'all about the plot synopsis. So, um, Scrapper is about this um, this uh, daughter, right? Um, she's twelve years old, and somehow she lives on her own, right? Um, father nowhere to be seen. Mother completely passed away, but she has um, a little memory of her mother, um, which is on her phone, and then. Um, 
her father comes back, and it's like a reconnection film, uh, like a re like a reconnection between um, the daughter and the father, and yeah, again, before diving into this, the movie was not on my radar. I had zero anticipation or zero interest of seeing Scrapper, um, but when I watched it, I, I, I actually um, thought. This was a, a, a really, um, it, it does pull your heartstrings a bit when you watch this movie. Um, especially like the dynamic between um, the, the daughter and um, the father trying to reconnect and just explain why he left. Um, um, but yeah, um, there were like a few confusing things in the film, like for example, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, lives on uh, on her own. But 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 in but in the beginning of the movie, we do see see him have uh, we we do see um, the girl having um, this uh, friend who is like a neighbor, I guess, um, in uh, the movie. And uh, yeah, he he comes by um, like in the beginning of the movie. At first, I thought it was going to be about. Um, um, the girl and and at first I thought that was the brother, but then in actuality, not the brother at all. Um, but the movie at times um, there was this um, editing issue which I had with the movie where it was um, uh, where basically okay this is spoilers for the movie, um, but I but I do recommend a, a scrapper. Uh, but was that? so. There's this one scene where, um, I forgot what the girl was call called, but let's just call her Emily. So Emily, um, drops her phone while, um, being in a chase, in a chase scene with, um, the police because, uh, I completely forgot what happened, but, um, she lost her phone, then, then she was like, oh, Where's my phone? Where's my phone? So then, um, goes outside, and then there's like this, um, this editing thing, right? Where she, where it reuses the same, the same scene, back to back to back, um, and then it goes back to there, and there, and there, and then flash, 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 flash. cut to next scene. Um, yeah, I... I didn't like the, the the editing in the film, but but again, as I said, uh, it's mostly a nitpick in the movie. But yeah, um, the cinematography was absolutely um, excellent in in um, Scrapper. Um, I liked how um, I I can't remember some of the particular shots, but I do remember this one shot of um, the father. And uh, Emily, um, outside of a a uh, football pitch, and then the father picks um, Emily up, and yeah, um, I, I I absolutely enjoyed Scrapper. Um, I didn't think that it was a bad movie, but but bro, uh, when I was at the secret screening, um, at times, um, like hell. I, like I mentioned in the beginning, when I was at the secret screening, um, I was thinking to myself, uh, so far this is okay, but, but but luckily there was another part of my mind where I was like, why not I stick around just to see if the movie's good? Because um, most of the audience members um, who were at the secret screening, which I went to, most of the people left. Like some of the people strip fled the cinema, um, but then I was like, well, you just, you just came out of here just to see a secret screening, but sadly it wasn't the film that you watched. But what I also didn't get was, um, in the website, in, um, Cineworld, it was rated 15, but, um, Scrapper is a 12, um, so that was a bit of a misunderstanding thing. Sydney World, am I right? Um, but yeah, my final score for Scrapper is a 7.6 out of 10. 
Um, I wasn't expecting this movie to be, um, to be, uh, this good. Um, did have some flaws here and there, but overall, I did have a, a absolutely good time, uh, watching the, uh, watching the Scrapper, um, in, uh, the cinema. And, um, if, if this is out in America and everywhere else, um, for the people who haven't seen Scrapper yet, go watch it. Go watch it. It, it. it is absolutely good. Like you are, you are going to have like a, maybe not like a blast, but but just a good time. Like if you just want a, a nice calm um, movie, and also um, if you have epilepsy, just skip this one because there are some flashy imagery in uh, Scrapper, but. Uh, yeah, let's move on to number three. And at number three, we got Gran Turismo. So, um, before diving into Gran Turismo, um, I only played like a bit of the video game, but I was never familiar with um, the true story of this uh, kid who played Gran Turismo, then got into a tournament and, and became like a um, like a real uh, a NASCAR uh, driver. Um, but yeah, um, when I saw the trailers for the movie, um, it didn't give me that much hype. Like I like I was interested, but I wasn't like full on, full on, full on interested that I that I wanted to rush out and and uh, see the movie because I because first. I thought it was going to be mediocre, but I watched it, and I was surprised. Like it was really good, and I was also really shocked at the same time because, uh, um, because since since this is based off of a, a true story, and I did do research, and there was uh, this one incident where um, he had a car crash, and um, and I, and I was in full on shock. Um, especially because, like, I'm speechless, um, but yeah, um, um, the guy who played, um, the kid in, uh, Gran Turismo, I think he, he did a terrific job, uh, playing as the character, and, uh, David Harbour also did a really good job playing this, um, playing this, uh, driving instructor, uh, being, being like, okay, um, um, you're in, you're out, you're in, you're out, and, oh, you puked on my lawn, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, um, so yeah, I, I enjoyed, uh, the performances of, uh, the kid and David Harbour, and, uh, what else? Oh, some of, like, the racing scenes in the movie, uh, man, it really sucked that I didn't see this movie, in in um in like a format of like um IMAX uh because um it sort of feels similar to um Top Gun Maverick and how um the driving scenes like really makes you feel like you're in um uh, on the seat and uh, and you feel like you're driving um one one of the uh, NASCARs in in a uh, Gran Turismo and uh yeah, like, it felt very, um, immersive at times. And, um, the cinematography was also, um, fantastic. Fantastic, honestly. But not the same level as, uh, another movie, which is gonna show up in one of the parts. Um, but, but the cinematography was excellent, um, at times. And um, one nitpick which I have for Gran Turismo is that um, okay, I don't know why Sony did this, but um, in in um, like the true 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 story, like it takes place in two thousand and eleven. Um, well, maybe not two thousand eleven, but like two thousand and tens, and the character of uh, Yan. Um, A.K.A. the kid, he's out here playing on a PlayStation Five and Gran Turismo Seven, even though those things come out years and years later. 
Um, so I do kind of wish that uh, they could have stuck with, um, you know, with a PlayStation 3 and whichever Gran Turismo was out at the time. Again, I'm not, I'm not a full-on expert on a Gran Turismo and all the other games and stuff. But yeah, but it's mostly like a, mostly sort of like a time nit nitpick. Um, so yeah. Overall, I had a lot of fun uh, watching Gran Turismo, and hell, when I finished watching Gran Turismo, went straight back home, rushed out, and uh, <laughs> and uh, played um, a bit of uh, Gran Turismo um, driving simulator on a uh, PlayStation Five. Um, because I, I had this cup before, um, years, but never had the time to play it, and fun fact, I barely even played the game. Um, but yeah, um, that's, that's Gran Turismo. Um, I'm gonna give Gran Turismo a solid 8.9 out of 10. I, I absolutely enjoyed the film. Um, it really felt immersive, like, in the movie, um, you really feel, um, the, the, um, d d development growing from a little kid playing a video game to a, a NASCAR driver, um, driving an actual, um, vehicle on, um, on, uh, the racetrack, um, but yeah. Um, let's, let's dive into number two. Coming in at number two, we got Creed 3. Um, I, <laughs> I never seen, like, just like with Indiana Jones, I, I never seen any of the Rocky movies. Um, or hell, not even like a single Creed movie, but did watch like the first um, few minutes of the first Creed, but I didn't got time to watch uh, Creed 2. But I remember seeing the trailers for uh, Creed 3, and uh, it got me um, interested. Um, um, I was like, the first sports movie to be filmed in IMAX, IMAX cameras. I'm gonna go see it. This the, the, the cinematography looks great, and uh, yeah, and I did want it to binge watch uh, Creed one and Creed two, or better yet, uh, the, the entire Rocky films. But sadly, just like with Indiana Jones, I wasn't able to to fully watch every single Rocky film and Creed film. But this is not like an MCU film where, oh, you need to watch this to understand this, you need, you need to watch this to understand this. Um, but yeah, when I, when I watched Creed 3, I, I absolutely enjoyed it. But, uh, um, I, I wasn't expecting this movie to be, to be this good. Uh, honestly, um, um, Jonathan made... We all know what he did, but okay, we're not on about we're not on about the gossip. We're, we're not on about the gossip. No. Anyways, um, Jonathan Majors absolutely stole the show, playing as um, Adonis's uh, brother, um, um, and how they both got into jail, but um, Adonis took um, the, the path of fame. While meanwhile. Um, I forgot what, uh, I forgot what, uh, Jonathan Majors' character was called in, uh, the movie, but, but he took the path of, of, uh, build-up, and just, and just seeing the, the sort of anger and uh, rage built up to, towards, uh, um, Adonis, uh, because I remember in, uh, the first Creed movie, um, it did open up with, with, um, with, uh, young Adonis, uh, in, in a prison, um, because he was in, uh, that fight, or, like, he punched someone, uh, outside of a, uh, outside of a gas station, um, which, which was then explored at the beginning of uh, Creed 3, um, but yeah, even the soundtrack was, was also bussin', 
in in um in um, Creed Three, um, especially the one that goes. Okay, I, I'm not gonna play it due to copyright reasons, but I have been copyright claimed a bunch of times. But it goes like this: Everybody wanna be a real, but every but for, forgot the rest of the the lyrics. But but it was good, honestly. Um, when I finished Creed Three, um. <laughs> It made me want to to uh, go outside, go for a run, and you know, get exercise and the, you know, just get him fit, um, <laughs> because this movie really um, encouraged me, especially another movie, which 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 doesn't deal with uh, physical activities, but yeah, the whale. When I watched that. It actually made it, made me wanted to lose weight and eat less. But anyways, we're not talking about the whale. Get the hell out of here, Brandon Fraser's the whale. We're on about Creed Three, baby. Um, but yeah, the fighting scenes um 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 w were absolutely uh breathtaking in in uh the movie. Um, um honestly, I think uh Michael B. Jordan should direct more movies outside of um, um Creed because like he has talent not only in um acting but also in 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 a directing um, um because he he does do an outstanding performance playing as Adonis but um but but but, but he even does like a spectacular job uh directing uh Creed 3 and hell I, I almost wanted to put uh, a Creed 3 on my best list but I wasn't able to, to, but, um, did put it here on surprise list because it did, uh, surprise me. Um, so yeah, Creed 3, wait, nit nitpicks, nitpicks, I forgot to mention it, the nitpicks. Uh, to be honest, I don't even have that much, uh, nit nit nitpicks. I absolutely, uh, enjoyed the film. Um, so yeah, honestly, I think that the, I think I'm gonna give this movie probably a solid um, um I think this might be like another uh I think it's a nine uh, out of ten. I I, I absolutely excuse me. I absolutely had fun watching Creed Three. Um Um the 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 punching scenes and the training scenes really really makes you uh, want to go out go out um and just go for a run go to the gym and just you know like boom, 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 boom. let's go on to number one so my number one most surprising movie of 2023 is plain uh, Honestly, I was <laughs> I was absolutely surprised how good this movie was because um before diving in the plane, like I remember seeing the posters for the movie um and bits of like the trailers uh to be, be because I remember just thinking to myself, "Oh, this looks like one of those uh typical cheesy action movies." Uh before diving in, and hell, I remember I had a absolutely tough time. It was February of uh of last year, and I and I had a, t a tough time because back at my old uh place, I I had um so in my room the ceiling uh there was like a uh dripping coming from the ceiling, uh so I was quite upset. But then during the evening, um. Me and my mom, we went to go see Plane, and bro, we both had a good time watching Plane. Um, honestly, um, J J Jared Butler, um, absolutely kills it playing as this, um, as as this uh, pilot who wants to keep um his pilots, uh, not pilots, passengers safe, um, um, and to save them from um the terrorists who who um. Who you know? Who found them um, after the the, the the plane crash? Uh, oh, and hell, and Mike Coulter, aka my boy Luke Cage, he also kills it in the film. 
um, playing as this uh, as this uh, prisoner who who just wanted to dip at the end of the movie. But um, yeah, I, I absolutely had fun watching um, um, playing. Um, my only nit nitpick, which I have for the film, is that um, at times, um, at times there was a bit a bit of shaky cam, where the camera was constantly like shaking about um, during um, action scenes uh, or like fighting scenes. Uh, and yeah, my final rating for Plane. Um, if you guys follow my Instagram, you guys did saw that I gave it. A nine out of ten, and to be honest, I, I think this is still a nine out of ten. Like I, I absolutely had a blast watching um, Plane. Um, the 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 crash scene was intense, and um, you were really rooting for um Jared for Jared Butler's character and and uh, Mike Coulter, um. Um, to, you know, to, to, to save the, the passengers and hoping that uh, they were okay. Uh, honestly, this was a fun time. Um, so... But... Um, yeah, overall, I, I had fun watching uh, Plane. Um, at first, the movie didn't come up into my brain yet. Um, after, when I watched it, like, months and months after, but honestly... I should give Plane um, a rewatch, and I, I highly recommend uh, Plane. Like, if you just want a fun, bone-chilling action movie, I recommend Plane. <laughs> Honestly, it was absolutely, um, <laughs> it was absolutely like a fun time in in um, the cinema. Um, so yeah. <laughs> What have we learned from the surprising list? We have learned that you shouldn't judge a film by its cover. Um, so, yeah, um, that was plain. Um, and that was the list. Um, thank you guys for watching my surprising movies of 2023 list. And I'll see you guys in part three, uh, where we dive into, excuse me, the mediocre movies of 2023. So, yeah, make sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in part three.